Um, I, well, for the first uh, 26 years of my life, I basically just sort of messed around and didn't really work very hard, but had a great social life. And then I decided I wanted to grow up a little bit and fell into the job that I uh, got into at the time, which was recruitment. Realised I was very, very good at it. Um, and I met a guy in a car park and we got talking. I had an Aston Martin at the time. And he said, look, I'm setting up a new project. Do you want to come on board? It's a brand new startup. It's, it's fairly entrepreneurial. We'll have to take a huge salary cut. You know, the car will have to go. Um, but I think we can make some money. So that really was the first time I've met an entrepreneur um, who was setting up a business. And it was an opportunity to get in very, very early. And once I did that, it was a very, very tough project. You know, we grew to just under 100 million turnover in seven years and 500 staff. And we opened 27 offices. So it was a tough project, um, but very exciting, terrific. Learned loads, made loads of mistakes, was young enough to, uh, uh, you know, bat those mistakes back. Um, but it was good. So that, that's, that's what happened, really. I don't think I had a passion for it until I got into it. Well, the first thing is funding. Um, I have a very, very powerful backer, Sir Peter Ogden, who's a very wealthy individual, very high net worth individual. Um, so he was the financial backing. I had my own money, but I didn't have enough of it to do the kind of work that we've done. Um, I realised very quickly that the sector I was going into was very strong. It was a real growth sector. So I got the sector right. Um, but then really just pushed it very, very hard and fast as far as uh, hiring and systems and processes and opening offices. You know, I had learnt a lot in the last in the 10 years previous. So I did a lot of things that would take other people a lot longer to work out. I, I just knew the answers. So I could very quickly set up a business, very quickly grow it, very quickly hire people, get the banking funding in place, open offices, buy systems, buy, buy everything I needed to buy. I just knew how to do it. I would say a couple of things. First of all, education, I think is very, very important. I was very well educated or at the time I didn't realise it. Um, I left school at 16. Um, I didn't go on to further education. I didn't really want to. I felt I'd learnt enough and I felt I'd out outgrown school quite quickly. Um, and I wanted to get out to work and earn some money. So I think the combination of a good education, um, the need and want for money, and I think I learnt from my father um, that confidence is really, really important. I had a I was always a very, very confident person. I think when you're confident, you're not afraid to make mistakes. And I think that is a really, really key part to how, why I've been successful. It's just, I just have, I, I'm not fearful of anything. So, you know, confidence, good education, need for money, want for money, I think they're pretty key attributes. Good partners uh, have a sense of humor. Um, you know, things can go wrong and, uh, it's not always a, a smooth ride, it can be quite rocky. I think if you have a sense of humour between you and you're a, a like-minded individuals, um, I think you, you'll get on. It's when you're different from the person that you work with um, that I think you probably have problems. And the other thing is, you know, he's the right type of individual for me because he allows me to run the business and he allows me to, to do what I need to do. He knows that I'm the expert in what I do. And equally, I know he's the funding. I don't, you know, don't expect him to come into the office all the time, but I expect him to be there if there's a problem. And it's just, you just know when the relationship's right. And you should never go into business with anybody just for money, because they can turn out to be very difficult. And conversely, what happens sometimes if a business it goes badly, then they fall out with a partner. The, on, the, on the flip side, if the business goes very well, then the person who's done all the work sometimes um, feels a little bit short-changed with the person who just wrote the cheque because they'll end up owning quite a bit, a bit, a bit of the, the business. And one of the things Sir Peter said to me when we first did the deal, he said, you will wake up in five years' time and wonder why I've got 50% of your business when all I did was write out some big cheques at the beginning. And, and he's right, that's, that's probably what happens. It won't happen with me because we've had that conversation. <laughs> but So, you know, things go bad, your financial backer can get very difficult. If things go very well, you can get a little bit relent. Uh, you, can, you can sort of be a little bit sour about your investor. So you just have to make, be, go into things eyes wide open. Uh, I've got an Airstream Caravan, which is a 1950s uh, uh, silver, uh, sort of chrome-plated um, aluminium. 
So I had it polished at vast expense, so it gleamed like you cannot believe. I had it refurbished inside so that all I could do was sit in there and listen to music. And then I bought a forest and put it in the middle of the forest um, because I wanted absolute serenity and calm in my life um, from the madness of the business. So that's what I did. That's probably the maddest thing I've done. <laughs> There is no doubt money complicates your life. And I've been through rich and poor. And I've been very poor as well. One of the key things for me, when we sold my last business, I had a three month high. It was like a real adrenaline shot. I went out and I bought things and I really did have a lot of fun. But three months after that, there was a very hollow feeling. And I realized fairly quickly that it was more fun getting there than actually arriving. And then when I sold my house and my cars and, and many of my possessions to set this business up, I felt so free. I felt like I'd untied this sort of colossal tent around me and it had flown off. And I, I just felt so free. You know, I had a bicycle and I was cycling to work. It was just such a lovely feeling. I'm going back into the other world now. This is a hugely successful business. But I've learned a lot about the carnival around you and that, you know, that, that, that can get very, very complicated. Because once you have money, the complication is what you do with it. And you speak to people who are much, much, much wealthier and more successful than I am, and they will say exactly the same thing. The people who have really, really done well are the people who have made an extraordinary amount of money but have a very simple life. That's the trick. The company has enormous potential. I mean, it could really be a billion dollar company. There is a energy policy in every country in the world, and we are only just you know, touching the sides of this sector. Um, so the company could be very big, it could have thousands of employees, hundreds of offices, it could be, could be really exciting. For myself, I've been doing it for quite a long time now. I've been in this business for over 15 years. I would say I probably have another five to 10 years in me and then let somebody else take the reins. So for me, a um, some kind of private equity deal for the business I think will be right for me and it will certainly be right for the, for the management team who are very, very young, they're very, very ambitious, they're me 10 years ago. So, you know, I, at some point I will step aside, but the business I think will carry on for a very long time.